In mathematics, engagement and motivation are essential parts of the class. Keeping the students motivated can change the dynamic of learning. A significant positive outcome can be achieved. Today's video is about that engagement. It is about some strategies or approaches we can use to make our students learn and more importantly, enjoy the class, enjoy the subject. Let's see. For example, if you're going to teach the Pythagorean theorem, and that is an area problem. Um, you have multiple uh, ways to start with this lesson, but I prefer to start with history instead of mathematics. History is motivation and engagement. For example, if you start your lesson about the Pythagorean theorems, just talking about mathematics, just talking about geometry, you're going to have the students uh, engage you for a few minutes. But if you start with history, if you start with who was the first one who discovered this, um, it was really, really uh, the it was really, really Pythagoras, or was uh, some some people before, way before Pythagoras, and and we can start a discussion about history. And they are talking about mathematics, but they are talking about history. History is uh, essential uh, because mathematics is an abstraction, and that abstraction is coming from the reality. And the students need to understand. The abstraction is no more than something that someone um, experienced from the reality. And if we can establish that connection, uh, we, can, we can make our class more interesting. When history has been explored, uh, we are ready to start working on, on the proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, in the same way that I explained in a previous video about how can we move from rise over run, the slope of the line, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, all the way to dy dx. Um, we are going to do it with every subject in mathematics, every topic in mathematics. And we're going to move that area problem in, in the Pythagorean theorem um, all the way to the integration of algebra and geometry together. In that proof that I will show you now, uh, that will generate, that will open the eyes we generate the motivation, the engagement. It will generate the curiosity of the students or the learners to explore the reason behind a square plus b square equals c square. That integration, the algebra and the geometry integration through the proof is critical, is essential. And I believe that when the teachers know the curriculum, know the end, they can do a great job explaining at every grade level, middle school, high school, the Pythagorean theorem in such a way that they will not forget. Let's see that proof. Everything is start with a square. Just that. Everything is start with one square. How? Take a look. I am not taking care about the measurements. I just want to divide the size of the squares into two different segments. So let's say that here we have A and here we have B. And here we have A and here we have B. And here we have A and here we have B. And here we have A and here we have B. Don't pay too much attention to, to the, uh, the measurements. It's just two segments, A and B. And I want to say that the area of this square is one side to the second power, but each side here is A plus B times A plus B. And it's the same as A plus B squared. So far, so good. Now we know the area of the biggest square. 
And we're going to go back to that area at the end of the uh, proof. So you know that this is a 90 degrees angle. Everyone knows that this is a 90 degrees angle. So we are working with four right triangles. Do they are equal? I don't know. The area of one of them, the area of one of those triangles, only one, is A times B divided by 2. Well, how do I know if all of them are equal? No, because they look like no. It's because you have here one side, 90 degrees, and another side. One side and another side, and in between, a 90 degrees. So by the criteria, psi angle psi, you can say that these two triangles are congruent, and all of them are congruent. You can make a simple rotation, a simple translation with one of the angles, and you will see that B will match, uh, the psi B will be matching the rest of the psi B, and the psi A will be matching the rest of the psi A. So by psi angle psi, those triangles are the same. So the area of the four triangles, okay, is 4 times AB divided by 2. And we're going to return to this. What is next? Okay. Next, I'm going to put here that this is the psi C. All of the sides are the same. Why? Because the triangles, we already proved it, that they are congruent. So all the four sides are congruent. All the three sides are um, congruent, the corresponding sides. So C, 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 and C. Okay. I want to find the area of this square. Oh, it's not a square yet. I forget that. It's not a square. It can be a rhombus because it's the one that has four equal sides. But I don't know anything about the angle. I don't know about this angle here. What kind of angle is this? Okay, this is why. I don't know the, the measurement of the angle. But I know that this angle here is alpha, a Greek letter. And this angle here is 90 minus alpha because this is the complement. The sum of the interior angle is equal to 180. So I can say that this angle here, based on the corresponding angle of congruent triangle, this angle here is, is 90 minus alpha. So with this information, I can find y. y plus alpha plus 90 minus alpha is equal to 180 degrees. Why 180 degrees? Because this is on a straight line. This is on a straight line. So the sum of them is 180. So alpha with alpha cancels, and y plus 90 is equal to 180, and immediately y is equal to 180 minus 90. So I'm talking about that y is 90 degrees. So y is 90 degrees. The rest of these angles are the same. This is this is alpha, and this is 90 by the same proof. And this is 90 minus alpha, okay? 90 minus alpha, and this is alpha. And by the same criteria, this is 90. And this is 90 minus alpha, and this is alpha. And by the same criteria, this is 90. Now we have four equal sides and four right angles. This is a square. And the area of the square is C squared. So the area here is of that square is C squared. What else? I can, let's put everything together. Mathematics is a game. It's a puzzle. And we have to put the puzzles together. So I want to find go back to the area of the square, the initial square, the big one. That area was a plus b to the second power, a plus b to the second power. And this area is equal to the area of the four right triangle that I have here, plus the area of the square inside here. We found it, c squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have 2ab plus c squared. Almost there. This is a binomial square. You can multiply a plus b times a plus b, distribute the property, combine like terms. You can do this. You can finish with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, cancel the 2ab by subtracting, and you're going to have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus 2ab equal c squared. Boom! 2A's, 2AB minus 2AB cancel out, and we have now A squared 
plus b squared equals c squared. The Pythagorean theorem. This video is an invitation to explore. This video is an invitation to provide the student with engagement, to provide the student with a dynamic way of learning. At any level from 6 to 12, you can use this, or at least expose the students to the elements of this proof. I know it's a lot of integration, a lot of arithmetic, a lot of algebra, a lot of geometry, but at the end, they will not forget. So I will appreciate if you give if you write your comments below about how can you do this in a way that the students learn lifetime. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, give us a like and share. See you in the next video.